Hi everyone, this is Andrew again. Not too much on the radio front recently, but uh, I have been out and about to a couple of radio rallies, uh, amateur radio rallies, and uh, picked up a couple of pieces of test gear which I thought you might like to see. This is the Tele Equipment um, D65 oscilloscope from about 1976. Um, this cost me £15. Um, I was told it was working and obviously you've got no way of testing it when you're, when you're out in the middle of a football field somewhere at a you know, sale. Um, and when I got it home it did actually work but it was quite intermittent. Now I did read these are sometimes intermittent on the trigger circuit and that's what it was doing. So I knew it was something along those lines. Um, I got some advice off someone off the Vintage Radio Forum here in the UK and it's worked and the scope works wonderfully now so I'm really really pleased. I'll show you what that was um, in a minute. So let's just have a look. <coughs> Excuse me. It's quite a nice scope. It's got several um, little features my more modern uh, Tektronics and Harmeg scopes don't have. There we go. Um, quite a nice little sweep button. None of my scopes have that. I sometimes turn it on and just look for it. Look for that. So obviously, um, Tele Equipment were a British company making scopes in the Channel Islands. They were later taken over by Tektronics um, uh, and became part of the Tektronics group. And in fact, the manual um, has got uh, Tektronics at the bottom of it. And you can see there's some. Um, similarities in the design between um, tele equipment and tektronics uh, just the blue here and the knobs and things um, so I'll turn it off and I'll show you what the repair was right and here's the inside and it's time for some wobbly camera work right what I was told to do by this chap on the UK vintage radio forum you see these silver circles here they're actually this is actually a double sided PC board and they've got access to the other side if you like by through holes and these are filled with solder and joined to the other side of the boards and there's quite a number of them you can see some here um, some smaller ones here down there so I've done as many as I could um, reflowed the solder so just heated them up um, added a a new um, little bit of solder to them, heated them up until they bubble, let them cool down and lo and behold when I switched it on again the thing works perfectly. Um, part of the problem was the trigger would start, half, or the sweep would start halfway across the screen or it would start where it should and then it would fade or it wouldn't work at all. Um, so what I did, I, I couldn't work out what was actually going wrong. So I went through the board and you know checked some components out and reseated these transistors here. You know all the all the things you should do. Put some uh, cleaner in some of the switches and turn the switches uh, lots of times. You know all the standard things. Um, I couldn't find anything wrong with any of the components, any of the resistors. That's quite often a fault with these. Uh, they, the resistors go high. But once I'd done this. Um, little fix here that this guy told me about the thing worked perfectly um, what how I found it was a dry joint was uh, which you know in effect it, it is is I got really annoyed with it and I flicked the knob here like and uh, and the sweep turned on straight away and I thought oh, m must be a dry joint um, so anyway and I went round the board and I found just by pressing here I could make the sweep start working again. So, uh, so I know it was a dry joint somewhere but um, taking an oscilloscope like this apart is not for the faint hearted. You've got all these little uh, connections here that would need to be removed um, and you've got this uh, board here which would have to come out to allow you to remove this board um, it's hard to work, you couldn't really work from the other side uh, because you've got the uh, CRT tube running up there. It's very little space. 
The other thing that was wrong with it um, is, as you can see, I've replaced these two supply smoothing uh, capacitors there. These were uh, 330 UF at 160 volts, made by Pi in 1975, August, sorry, January 1975. Um, and I don't know if you can see, but just in the middle of the two lower tags there, there's the vent hole and the electrolytes leaked out. And the same with that one, you can just see there in between the two lower tags. Interestingly, these are while they've got three three legs on the bottom here, there's only one uh, c capacitor inside, and there's a little wire that links the three holes, if you like. So um, I don't know if you can see, but the yellow painted tag on the bottom there is actually a dummy. There's nothing actually in there. I don't know why they did that actually. No idea. Um, everything else looks to be okay. I've tried to get a mirror, so a little um, dental mirror down underneath these two, um, see if they're leaking. But I think why these two had leaked is because there's a nice big wire round resistor there, which would have given off quite a bit of heat. And the capacitors, if you can see, it's not. That's come above. The capacitors would have been right next to them, right next to this resistor, and got really, really hot. So there we go. So it works perfectly now, and I'm really, really pleased with it. Incidentally, these scopes, something when you're buying tele equipment scopes. Now this one's had a a modern power lead attached to it, but originally they had a rather unique mains lead which went in here and you can't get them so just watch that you know if you're buying a tele equipment scope ask if it's got the original um, power connector to it because they're hard to find so you could just drill a hole in the back and uh, put a new power lead in but anyway so yeah very nice piece of equipment which I'm going to enjoy using another couple of pieces that are new to me here this is the uh, Marconi Instruments TF2604 VTVM. Um, they call it an electronic voltmeter. Uh, let's just tilt the camera up so we can have a better look at it without me. Right, this one can measure uh, AC and DC volts as well as ohms. It's got a centre zero facility there. Um, the probes it uses are this plain probe here for DC and ohms measurements. Little switch here. And then for AC measurements, it's got this probe here. Now this has a EA52 valve inside it, which I think is a diode valve. Uh, anyway it cleaned up quite nicely um, if I didn't mention how much it cost it cost me £12 um, and what was wrong with it was the chap who sold it me said it works but uh, not properly what was wrong with it is uh, one of the capacitors inside was a bit bulgy and a bit leaky so I've replaced that and uh, it seems to work absolutely fine now. Um, very useful. I've calibrated it as much as I could. Um, excuse this while I just lower the legs on the tripod. Right, I've used it, I've um, calibrated it as much as I could within the uh, precision of the equipment I have. Um, it all seems to work absolutely perfectly now, and it's going to be a very useful instrument. Below it is the uh, Marconi TF2600 sensitive valve voltmeter. Now this is an AC only valve voltmeter for uh, audio work really. Um, it hasn't got any probes with it, you know there's no special probes. It's just done by leads, you know normal test leads. Um, it measures up to 300 volts AC. 
you know I've left it on 300 volts just in case I shove 300 or more volts you know sorry just in case I shove too much voltage up it it's always a good thing to do with your meter leave it on the highest voltage um, setting this thing's also quite interesting it's got outputs here from a uh, wideband amplifier so you can plug it into your scope and things like that and I thought I'd get it out I've actually got two of these I bought one for spares actually that was on eBay recently it wasn't very much I think I got it for 99 pence um, and I bought it for spares because this thing here didn't come with a very good handle and uh, they've got a stand underneath the chrome stand that, that flips out uh, this didn't have the chrome stand so I um, used the parts from the spare because they're the same case to put on this one to make it uh, more cosmetically complete this thing when I bought it um, didn't work properly um, inside here on the attenuator here or the range meter there's some muir head precision resistors that are wound on a little card and when I'm talking precision I really do mean precision and I don't have anything of that that um, standard to be able to measure replacements so I did it as best I could and the meter works funnily enough um, there's about five or six wire wound card resistors inside it um, Oh, sorry wound they're not wire well they are wire round because it's wire wound around a card but um, not in the same sense of wire wound as in that so um, funny as I was saying funnily enough the other meter that I've got exactly the same model it's exactly the same resistance that, uh, that has gone wrong so I'll probably uh, repair that um, and put it on eBay again and I've had a little bit of a clear round as well. Um, I've put my Heathkit uh, uh, RC bridge up here. Um, the Sankor SG65 has gone there, leaving room for the two Marconi meters there. The Marconi bridge stays there, as does um, the advanced signal generator. And over here, I've moved the Wanker uh, auto balance bridge into the corner because it doesn't get used that much and there's another FM signal generator down there I'm not sure what to do about that because this um, SG165 does everything that the tailor can down here I'll move that light you can see it a bit better there's the tailor down there um, I'll say the Senkor does what this tailor can do much much better um, and the other thing I bought, which this cost me, excuse the noise, is a Heathkit audio watt meter, which will be great for um, uh, aligning radios. This cost me five pounds from the same rally as the uh, Marconi. Works perfectly. Well, that's it from me. Hope you've liked having another look round. Um, some recent acquisitions um, I'll tell you what just before I go I'm very pleased to see that Shango is back on YouTube after a few days and some confusion by the sound of it very good to see him back very happy so good to see you back Shango